Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I thought it was time for another one of those garden tours brought to you by my sponsor, Vessi Seeds. Almost all the seeds here in my garden were provided by Vessi Seeds. And uh, if you want to help support the podcast and this YouTube channel, there's something you need that they sell, go to their website and buy it from them using the coupon code in the description box of this video, GAVS20. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, around the middle of uh, June and uh, had some challenges this, uh, this uh, gardening season here and there, but uh, you know, we always persevere. We, you know, uh, when in doubt, reseed, replant, <laughs> just keep at it. Perseverance is, is everything to gardening. So uh, let's, uh, let's have a look around. Let me show you everything that's uh, got going on here in the garden. All right, so here we are at the entrance of the garden and I got these uh, four hugo culture beds. It's really one bed, <laughs> just partitioned into four. We got garlic here. I actually noticed a chipmunk um, I believe eating my garlic, which wouldn't you wouldn't believe, but anyway, I think the chipmunk is eating the garlic, which I wouldn't have thought was possible, but anyway, the rest of them are still there. So garlic that I planted last year. Uh, this is uh, squash. Uh, I had them I had them underneath that uh, that thing, right? And uh, it's just about time to take that off for good. But uh, try to give them as much heat as possible. If you're wondering why there's a rock here. I tend to, when I plant squash, I plant three and I put a rock in the middle just so I know roughly where they're planted. If the rock's in the middle, I know they're planted in a triangle around the rock. I plant three because it, it's rare that all three grow. You can notice there isn't three growing anywhere. There's two there, there's one there, it doesn't even look that good, and there's two here and one there. All right, so I'll probably move one of these when I have the, the right conditions. Basically, if there's a two or three rainy days in a row in the forecast, that's when I move plants carefully, because uh, that one just doesn't look very uh, vigorous to me. So I'm going to make that call. And it's probably overcrowded here anyway. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of squash for. I mean, those four squash will go right up this hill here and probably cover the whole area with their uh, foliage. Uh, here I got uh, potatoes planted. They're not growing yet. It looks like a pile of weeds because it is. Uh, this area above the fence, I went up there with a kind of like a scythe and just cut all that weeds and then threw it on top of here as the mulch for these potatoes. Uh, these potatoes here are growing. These were mulched with uh, grass clippings from my lawn. Uh, okay, so we're going to go in the garden here and I'm going to start on the right hand side. Um, this bed, I've got some spinach growing, and I had, you can see that the, the lines are green, and I had uh, other greens growing here, and they all just disappeared one night. Uh, so I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> so I just replanted yesterday with uh, lettuce. Um, this one here, it's kind of shot up. Um, I think the flea beetles have been at this, but um, that's uh, a kind of turnip. Uh, anyway, so... I think there, there is right, there's a chipmunk right there. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't know what chipmunks eat, but I've noticed this year, I've seen them in the garden more often than not, and things are disappearing um, in whole rows. Um, so I'm just replanting and replanting. And uh, yeah, I may have to get a little bit medieval with that chipmunk, chipmunk who knows. Um, so uh, here's a little herb bed that's uh, savory. Um, these are potatoes, and these are ones that I, I threw a bunch of yard waste on, but I also put uh, spruce boughs. There he goes again, over there. Little guy, what are you doing in my garden? He's here all the time. Um, anyway, uh, spruce boughs. Just, I was curious to see if, if the potatoes could make their way up through the spruce boughs, because uh, I have a, you know, I've got a, an abundance of spruce. <laughs> right? It's everywhere here. And uh, this year in particular, I think I might do a dedicated video on this topic, but uh, you know, I'm not driving to and from work anymore, right? I'm working from home like a lot of people are, if you're fortunate to have that kind of a job. And so my usual source of mulch, which is just, you know, yard waste people throw at the end of their driveway, I don't have it. So I'm just basically generating mulch from what I've got around the property. I think it's a good topic for a video. So uh, spruce boughs, I thought, and people think the needles, acidify the soil. They really don't. I mean, if, if you're just letting it sit on top and you're letting it basically exposed to the air and, you know, it breaks down, it just breaks down. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's that. Um, and look at the potatoes, no problem. 
uh, finding their way up through that uh, spruce bough mulch. Um, here's some more potatoes just through basically leaf mulch, right? You just, I bury the potatoes, I mean, I've done videos on this before. I stick them in the soil about wrist deep and then I put about six inches of mulch over the top. Depends on what it is. If it's hay or straw, you want to go a foot deep. But if it's leaves um, or grass clippings, you don't have to go nearly as deep because it's, it's more dense, right? Uh, here I've got uh, a, a kind of uh, green that I planted and they keep disappearing. And uh, you can see there's a block of wood there. There's a little mouse trap underneath that. I've had more mice in the garden, mice and voles, this year than any other year. I mean, I've always mulched my garden, well, I've been mulching my garden since 20, um, 2012, 2013. And I mean, every year is different, but uh, seems to be more mice around this year. Um, so for me, my approach is to just, uh, knock the numbers down a little bit, <laughs> right? So I've been putting traps out the last few days. I've probably taken out five uh, mice and voles and moles over the last week. But basically once the, I mean, they've got these, hopefully there's nothing in here. <clears throat> no, so that was flipped. Huh, that was just tripped, but nothing got in there. And not only that, but it broke, darn it. So yeah, I just reset this this morning and it's already, see, it's already been sprung. But it's, it's, it's completely failed. Um, anyway, they got little tunnels like that. And you just put your trap down in the tunnel. Put something over the top so they feel really safe. <laughs> right? Kind of. And, uh, yeah, and then just, you know, check it twice a day. And uh, deal with whatever you find in there. Um, so, uh, anyway, dealing with that and uh, working through it. Um, this is uh, carrots here. Uh, they're growing. There's a little bit of weeding needing to be done, but uh, you know, um, I just weed things when I when I feel like it. <laughs> That's basically it. Uh, to weed this garden would take me 10 minutes. That's it. This is only uh, about four by six in di dimension. Uh, I planted some beans here a few days ago. Um, this is my way to get the beans started, keeping them nice and warm, and also keeping uh, the uh, soil from uh, drying out, right? Keeping it nice and moist. So warm and moist like this. But I mean, it's a risky way to germinate things because as soon as they emerge from the soil, you gotta get that plastic off. But on the bright side, you, you plant them, you water them, you put the plastic down, you don't worry about it. Um, but you might wanna mark it on your calendar and just be aware of you know, what day it is. More garlic here and uh, onion sets uh, have begun to grow. Here's onion set, right? I did a video last year where I had this plan to interplant onions with garlic because they don't shade each other out. It's sort of a perfect marriage. So that's what I did. Um, the garlic seemed to be doing great. Uh, here I got beets. Let me just change my angle here so the wind's at my back. Um, got beets here, and uh, if you notice, my beets are larger than yours, and you're in the same growing as me, a growing zone as me. Um, it's because these were planted out maybe first week of April. Uh, underneath one of these domes here. So that's why they're so far ahead. And of course there's a couple bare patches there where they need to be, I've done a bit, a little bit of replanting. I don't know why, but some of them just uh, failed. So you, you just replant. It's, don't get bent into shape, just replant. And you know, just some of them will be earlier than others. That's just the way it works. Um, here's a bed of uh, greens. It's basically lettuce and spinach. And you'll notice there's some kale in here. I didn't plant that, that just came up on its own. <laughs> There seems to be uh, kale seeds everywhere in my garden. <laughs> Not exactly sure why. It's a kind of wild kale and uh, it tastes really good and it grows well. Um, they really don't belong in this bed, <laughs> but uh, I, I've let them grow. Just, I, I plan to pluck them out and reposition them somewhere. I just haven't decided where to put them. They don't belong here. They're kind of shading out uh, everything else. But anyway, that's kale. Uh, you notice this is all mulched with uh, uh, grass clippings. Uh, I found that uh, this time of year, it's a, as you're moving into June, July, uh, you know, your grass, your lawn starts growing at a better rate. It's best to cut your lawn with a mulching blade and just let the grass fall where it is. But I got one stretch of my lawn where the septic field is that it grows at a really good rate and it really doesn't need nutrients because it's getting its nutrients from, 
you know, me and my family. <laughs> so uh, there's an abundance of grass there. It grows at about three times the rate of the rest of my lawn. So I'll put the bag on and use that because when you mulch between your, your rows with grass, it really smothers the weeds well. And it also seems to give, after a couple rains, having a mulch with grass, things start getting really green and growing really good. And it's just a great mulch, underage mulch. Uh, all right, now, next row. This is a bed, another one where I had everything planted under a dome very early. I'm just gonna change my angle to deal with the wind again. Um, so yeah, this one here, uh, I had lettuce and kale. Uh, that dill there in the middle just came up on its own because there's dill everywhere in my garden. It's just kind of a weed, a pleasant weed to have. Um, but yeah, this is a kind of uh, like a butter, butter style lettuce. Um, so this is all going to come out. I've been harvested. Basically, this is our lettuce for the week. At the end of this week, all this this garden will be totally stripped. I'm going to plant potatoes in it. So I, th I think there's an argument to be made for starting greens under a dome in late March. I mean, this really depends on how much sun you have and so on and so forth. But And then uh, around late June, harvesting all of that, because that's, you know, the, the spinach here started to bolt this week. Uh, so harvest all of that and then plant potatoes. If you have got a fast growing, fast maturing variety of potato, like a red Norland, um, I think I'm going to put purple chieftain in this one actually, but anyway, there's certainly enough time to plant and grow and harvest potatoes before, you know, it, it, it's, it's over sort of thing. So I think it's a perfect succession crop for this climate. Uh, fast growing, cold hardy greens under plastic, and then when they're done, and this, this lettuce is starting to get done too, like you can see this, this lettuce is sort of perfect, right? Nice, just the way you'd want, you know, like a Boston style lettuce. But you see this one's starting to bolt, right? And so is this one, it's starting to make a flower, right? So, you know, it's time to, time to harvest all this stuff and it's, it's just enough time to plant potatoes and have them basically like a October harvest. Uh, over here I've got uh, a parsnip bed and these weird looking grass things are actually um, salsify from last year and they're starting to flower. This, if you're wondering what this the flower looks like, that's what they look like. I left some of them in the ground and I uh, wanted to let them go to seed and just see what happens. Um, one of my viewers said that the greens, looks like grass, right? One of my viewers said that the greens are edible and uh, I harvested, there was a number of these growing in here. I cut one of them off and just, uh, this was probably a month ago before they started to flower. Harvested the greens and they were, they were perfectly good to eat. I enjoyed them. Uh, so uh, yeah, there's something to be said for Maybe you plant a bed of these and you leave a fraction of them in the bed for an early spring green in the next year, maybe. Um, anyway, that's what they look, that's what the flower looks like. Uh, almost looks like an aster. Uh, here's the flower before it's started to bloom. Right? Really weird plant, Salsify. Um, meant to grow more this year and sort of, I'll, I'll talk about that as we go along here. Um, this bed here is, uh, I think this one's pepper and eggplant. Uh, really not much to show, so I'll save that for the next video or, or one of those sort of short, short in-between garden tour videos. Uh, this one here is um, uh, a cucumbers. I'll give you a little peek at these. I had about half of them taken out by slugs, so I had to replant. But so is the, the, right here, this would be like one of the original ones. But further down the garden, you can see how much smaller they are because I replanted. But that's all you do when you're running into problems. You replant. <laughs> <laughs> just replant, be the, you know, just be, just be persistent. Don't give up on your garden. Just replant. Here's another uh, instance of uh, extreme persistence required. I had lots of carrots growing in this bed um, in, in April. I think one of my, maybe my April garden tour or my May garden tour, I showed, showed off and they all just disappeared. I don't know what happened. Um, so just yesterday I replanted, there's only a couple there, right? So I replanted the whole bed, <laughs> you know, because uh, I need carrots. Uh, more garlic and onions here. And uh, if you watched that video I did last fall where I was planting um, Egyptian walking onions, that's an Egyptian walking onion right there. I planted them all along the edge of this bed. And they, every single one of those grew, so that trick works really, really well. 
uh, and they're a, kind of a pleasant onion to grow, good for greens. Um, they don't take long to, to set, start sending out your, their, um, you know, flowers, but uh, yeah, a great self-perpetuating onion for sure. Uh, here's a bed where I've got spinach and kale and a kind of uh, sorrel, like a salad green, or you, you can have it as a cooked green as well. It's kind of a lemony tasting green. Uh, this uh, kale still needs to be thinned out and replanted elsewhere. I've started, so this area was out, this was under a dome. This was all planted under a dome, you know, end of March sort of thing. So I've started moving these, right? That's what you can see these ones nicely spaced, right? Um, this whole row of spinach will be replaced with kale from that middle row. I don't really know if this is gonna, I don't know anything about this plant. I don't know if it's gonna bolt. I don't know what its habits are. So we'll just see what happens there. But this kale is also gonna be moved to other parts of the garden. Not quite sure when. Starting back at the bottom of the hill here because just the, the direction of the wind, uh, I kind of needed at my back. So we, we were just over there. Now we're at the next row. Um, we've got uh, uh, strawberries growing here. I planted a whole bunch of, I think I did a video last fall where one of my asparagus had gone to seed, little asparagus berries, and I threw them on this bed all over the place, like maybe a hundred of them. I don't see any sign of any of those sort of wild asparagus seeds having germinated or turned into anything. Now maybe it takes two years, I don't know. Um, I do have a bed where I planted asparagus directly from seed and they're doing great, I'll show that um, in, in a minute. but. Uh, Here's uh, this bed's got uh, yeah. zucchini, zucchini all doing great, getting a great head start. What's that? That's a potato right there. What's that doing there? I had potatoes in this bed last year, so I'm gonna have to pull that out. I don't want that there, but uh, yeah, zucchini are doing great. And you see the difference, right? Here's one under plastic microclimate. And here's one outside of that, behind, right? Not as far ahead. Uh, over here we got uh, potatoes and peas. Last year I had potatoes and peas here. This year I got potatoes and peas here. Peas down the middle up the trellis. Potatoes on the sides under the mulch. And these peas are, uh, the highest of them are two feet high, uh, growing up this trellis. Uh, more garlic and onions here. Uh, here I got uh, corn in the middle. Now I had this plant, I had a sort of small 4x4 four four dome over this corn to give it a bit of a jump start. I'm really challenged in getting corn to grow here. It's just uh, not a hot, not a sunny place. It doesn't have any of the characteristics that tend to, you know, be uh, amenable to corn, but uh, I'm kind of stubborn like that. So this was a perfect bed for corn. You got corn in the middle because you really don't need to deal with it until it's time to harvest. And then I got beans all around the side. Yes, I do about the, I do know about the three sisters approach. Someone always says that. Um, but uh, this is what I'm doing. It's sort of modified two sisters. <laughs> beans around the side because, uh, you know, I sort of have to access them, right? They're easy to get at from the walking path. And then corn in the middle because I don't have to access that. And you're seeing a lot of weeds here. Um, once everything here is about, let's say, eight inches to a foot high, uh, I will mulch all the spaces in between with grass clippings. And the weeds will not be a problem. Uh, these are strawberries coming in really good. This is probably year, year two or year three for this location. So this is probably gonna be their, their best year. A uh, little bit of asparagus. I dropped some asparagus seeds here a couple years ago, coming in pretty good. Um, maybe next year I can harvest some. Uh, this is my uh, sort of, uh, just so you get a sense of where my season is. The tulips, it's kind of looking done, right? So the tulips are done. Got st uh, strawberries starting to get uh, some size here. The idea for this garden is it for it to be uh, tulips and strawberries. And I may actually make it bigger because I'm sort of wasting a lot of space here in the garden. I may extend that maybe next year or in the fall. Seems like I'm not using, I could be, you know, just, I could just have that much more cultivated space if I, if I chose to. Uh, anyway, the strawberries are starting to come in here. So hopefully uh, this year and next year I'll get good strawberries. So now I'm at the other end of the garden here, right? Where I just came from. 
And uh, I'm trying to find a, an angle here where the wind isn't so bad. Um, anyway, these are kale that I moved from that garden where I'm going to plant the potatoes uh, way down over there. Uh, these are the uh, winter boar variety of kale. I moved these just two days ago, so this, they're still kind of trying to adapt. And I still need to get the soil mulched here, but uh, I think they're going to do great. I, I grew kale in this part of my garden last year, so I'm sort of breaking one of my own rules for crop rotation. But I just literally, I don't know what went wrong with my plant, but I don't know where I'm going to put all this kale I've grown. And I need a home for it, so this, this I had planned to grow something else here, and it totally failed ahead. A little hothouse here and tomatoes and and, and uh, basil and they were growing and then I came out and they were all just gone disappeared completely and it's a bit too late to start over with that so I said the hell with it and I went with kale <laughs> that's it sometimes you just gotta make a call like that I'd rather get something and I'd rather get something that I know will work than frig around with something that may or may not work right I tried the experiment didn't work who knows you can see there's a hole right there uh, it's very possible that whatever made that hole, some little mouse, um, perhaps is what took out um, that. Uh, I got parsnips growing here. Uh, this little stretch of garden, I haven't really... I planted salsify here and I sort of had an epic fail with it. There's a few of them. I had... This is kind of like a wild kale that just came up on its own. A lot of weeds. This is salsify. It looks like onion, but it's salsify. Um, so I got some salsify growing here. It's a black salsify. Uh, so I, I gotta sort of, I gotta sort this space out. Just needs a bit of work, a little time. A uh, tiny bit of garlic here. I don't know how those got planted, but they, they're there. This is all uh, potatoes. Back down here at the bottom of the garden, this people were asking me about my uh, direct seeded asparagus. Uh, here they are. I mean, they're doing really well. Some of them are quite. This one here. Half an inch thick, right? I can't remember if these are one or two years old, but uh, you know it's not the right year for harvesting yet. They still need another year of, you know, development. But these were planted directly from seed, and this one here was, you know, you, you can buy bare-rooted transplants from, you know, garden centers for a lot of money. So I mean, this whole bed cost me a buck ninety-nine, you know. For about $12, I think I got six or seven of these bare-rooted ones. I planted these, oh God, like seven years ago. Look how thin and pathetic it is. All right, here's another one here. And they're perpetually being, look, there's a slug right there. They're perpetually being attacked by, a snail, sorry. They're perpetually being attacked by snails. There's a snail and a slug on this right now. Two snails and a slug. Um, you know, here's another one of them. Really no bigger than... Uh, the ones I planted directly from seed. So you know which way I'm leaning on that, right? And here's an odd thing. Here's one that looks like a seed that just started growing. I don't know where that thing came from. Also, within the asparagus, there's some uh, that look like seeds that just germinated. So I, I don't quite understand that. But anyway, the asparagus is doing good. Apple trees doing good, nice bloom. Uh, this is the uh, lovage plant, a kind of perennial celery. Uh, great plant, recommend that for anyone. And if you, if you know anyone that has that, it's very easy to break off a piece and uh, almost like you can kind of treat it like rhubarb. You know, just hack off a corner and stick it in the ground somewhere else. You get a whole new plant. One plant's all you need, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> I kind of regret putting it right next to this apple tree. Um, I may reposition it and put it at the far back there somewhere. Uh, more strawberries here. Uh, blueberries really, you know, looks like we're going to get a, a hell of a good blueberry yield this year. I guess I did the right job in, in pruning them. People are often asking me to do a video on pruning my blueberries, and I, <laughs> I never do. Uh, this one here is a, I think it's a cherry tree. Um, it's kind of its best looking year so far since, since I planted it. But it's still quite small. It's going to take time. Uh, dead apple tree here. This one I thought was dying, and I was right because it died uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, whole another topic, whole another video. But yeah, it died. But that's okay because you know I got all these nice uh, blueberries here, and uh, and strawberries on the ground. So maybe this can just be a blueberry and strawberry garden, and uh, forget about the tree. I, I inquired, looked into getting another tree, but. 
uh, every single place that sells trees is like totally sold out of them this year. There's just a worldwide shortage of apple trees. The uh, uh, lingonberries or partridge berries that I planted uh, earlier in the year, they're actually, some of these are actually flowering, so I might even get, I don't think I'm gonna get, you know, an amazing uh, yield this year. But there are, you know, there are flowers there. This one in particular is really, really flowered out. They say you should remove the flowers in year one, but I didn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll see if, see if that was wise or unwise <laughs> as, as time goes by. Uh, here's a bed where I had uh, uh, a kind of broccoli and uh, cauliflower going, and they were doing really well. And I took the dome off of them. I had, I had them growing under plastic, and I went away fishing for a weekend. And when I came, so I was gone like overnight for a couple nights. And when I came back, they were all kind of destroyed. I think we had a really hard, really hard frost. I mean, some, some brassicas are tougher than others. Um, you know, broccoli and uh, cauliflower are not as tough as kale. Um, so, um, yeah, they, they lost some leaves and they were set back and, and most of them just disappeared. And some, some of them are all right. Um, so I got to do a bit of replanting here and so on, which I started doing over there. I'm waiting for a string of rainy days. There's four plants right there. So I got to break these up. I'm just waiting for the right uh, conditions to do that. But uh, that was the plan for this bed to be a broccoli and cauliflower sort of thing. So uh, maybe just adjust your plan as the season goes on and go with what's working, right? Uh, we got uh, more uh, parsley here. Parsley. Uh, sort of one, two, three, four rows of parsley, and then on the left-hand side, on either end, I put, uh, sorry, these are parsnips, one, two, three, four parsnips, and on the far ends, I put parsley, same, basically same thing, <laughs> right, in terms of from a crop rotation point of view. Uh, more potatoes up here, just starting to poke up through the mulch, right? Uh, here's the... Swiss chart, if you watched that video where I was moving things, so there, these were all but dead. <laughs> you know, I moved these at a time when there was supposed to be, uh, you know, four days of rain, and then it ended up being sunny for four days. And so I nursed them along. Uh, now I left some in reserve, so I could still thin these out a bit more if these uh, aren't looking good, but they, you know, that one there looks a little bit forlorn. But uh, yeah, they should recover and I should have a decent, a uh, bit of uh, Swiss chard, but uh, yeah, these ones look great. <laughs> these are the ones that were growing underneath a little mini hoop, mini, uh, well, I think I called it a mini hot, uh, mini hot house or something like that. <laughs> uh, back down the bottom here, but this other row, let me just change my position here. Boy, it's a windy morning. It's the only time I got to film this, so I apologize for that. Um, under here I got squash, just a uh, winter squash. Growing. It's just about time to take these domes off and make a decision on which of these get to live and which ones don't. And I plant them in threes and you basically eliminate all but the biggest one after, you know, a few weeks. Uh, under here I got um, tomatoes going. Uh, really had a bit of a disaster with my tomatoes. I came out here a couple days ago to weed this out and 60% of the tomatoes were just not even there. I don't know what happened. No idea. We did have a hard frost, it might have taken them out, don't know. Um, you know, that's just the risk you take when you when you use this approach as opposed to, you know, there's, there's benefits and there's risks for every approach, right? So I just reseeded them. There's really not much to show. Maybe uh, in a couple weeks, I'll check up on that. Um, so uh, here's uh, beets that I had growing under a dome. They're doing good. I mean, it needs a little bit of weeding. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I try to, I never show a perfect garden because my garden's never perfect. This is just the way it looks sometimes, <laughs> right? You're going to get some weeds. Um, but, uh, you know, weeding's a skill and uh, I can weed a garden like this out in 10 minutes, no problem. As long as there's not black flies uh, harassing me. Uh, more garlic and onions. There's that Swiss chard. Uh, here's a bed I plan to put... Um, uh, beans in it, just haven't got around to it yet. It's still not too late to plant bush beans. It's going to be a bush bean bed. Um, this, that, uh, that company, Wiffle Tree, Wiffle Tree Farms, uh, they gave me this uh, Hascap berry. Uh, these over here are Saskatoons. 
And for the last three years, they've been growing underneath that apple tree over there. And this is about how big they were <laughs> the year I planted them. Um, since I moved them here, they've actually uh, looked happier and healthier than they've ever looked. So I think this is a much better spot for them. So hopefully I can get it, because Saskatoon's supposed to be a large, fast-growing sort of bush. So we'll see. Uh, anyway, we've got this uh, uh, Hascap. It's kind of like a large blueberry-type plant. Um, got potatoes here, all planted. I've almost done planting all my potatoes. Just a couple more places they need to go. Uh, this is a, another winter squash. Uh, these seeds all died and rotted. Like, they never germinated. I planted this bed. I had it all in the domes, and for whatever reason, it got too cold and nothing made it. So I just I just replanted these yesterday, and it's still not too late. I mean, it's it's getting yeah. But these are you know in, in my whole garden, you know when I'm choosing my seeds, and I've talked about this before. Um, when you say oh your tomatoes are ahead, your tomatoes are behind. There's tomatoes that take 120 days to grow. There's tomatoes that take 100 days to grow. And there's tomatoes that take 80 days to grow. So I always look at the days to maturity for whatever I'm planting, and I basically choose the one that uh, hopefully tastes the best and grows the fastest, right? Because I have a kind of a lousy growing season here. So everything this is a fast growing, short season winter squash. So it's not too late to plant it right now. Um, I mean, a lot of people don't even move their transplants out till the first new moon in June, which is in a week or so. So anyway, these will, you know, these, these sh should be fine, assuming they don't die again, right? <laughs> uh, actually, I think the variety I planted here, I ran out of those seeds anyway, so I, I can't even remember. I think they might be um, saved seeds from the Georgia Candy Roaster squash that I grew last year. Um, this is uh, collard greens. I haven't moved them yet because I'm waiting. They're still not big enough, in my opinion, to move. Uh, there's, a, there's a size. I like, you know, maybe eight inches high nine inches high to move plants. They're really not there yet. So uh, anyway, the plan is to pluck these out and sort of reposition them throughout this bed, fill the bed with them. And here, more garlic and onions. Uh, another one of those uh, hascaps there. Another hascap over there. And actually, an interesting observation, uh, this hascap plant uh, when I took it out of the package, um, two of the branches were sort of half broken off. They still had buds on them, so I jammed them in the ground just to see what would happen. This one actually seems to have found a way to root itself. This one doesn't look like it made it. Uh, so, you know, if you've got a hascap, maybe just cutting off a piece of, I mean, I mean, this is even without rooting hormones, so it's kind of interesting that it rooted anyway. So it must be a pretty, um, you know, aggressive uh, colonizer, a, a, just a tough, hardy plant. So, uh, yeah, if you've got hascaps and you want more, it may not be that difficult to propagate them. Maybe just a little dipping in the rooting hormone, hormone and sticking them in the ground might do the job. One more thing, I built these terraced beds. Uh, Oh, about a month or so ago. I filmed the whole thing, but I haven't got done editing that, that, uh, that film yet. But uh, anyway, I, I, you know, I, the idea was to plant pumpkins in these and have them sprawl over the hill. It's a really sunny spot. Um, I was away for a couple days with these closed. And the, uh, I guess it can get too hot under a dome because they just got cooked and died. So I had to replant them. These are, one of them, the, the left one's supposed to be those Atlantic giant ones, and the right's just a winter squash, a pumpkin type thing. Uh, anyway, that's the other part of the garden that's cultivated. One more thing, just an indication of where my season is, for those that are interested in that sort of thing. You got these uh, grapes, right? That's the stage of development where grapes are at. The buds are just beginning to open, right? Uh, and my rhubarb, another perennial, that's <laughs> rhubarb are massive and doing great. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I mean, the garden's doing good. It's been a strange spring, I mean, not the least of which, um, you know, COVID-19 uh, adding complications uh, to everything, but uh, for everyone. But uh, yeah, just uh, kind of an odd spring. It's, it seems like it's been too hot and too cold, <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. Uh, the, there's days when it's cooler than I think it should be, and there's days when it's way hotter, hotter than I think it should be. And it's really hard to um, make judgment calls about um, with the dome system I use. 
or whether to prop them open or vent them or whatever. Um, now, it could just be different because I'm here all the time. I'm working from home now. So I have to think about this, whereas normally I don't think about it. <laughs> I get that work and I just have my fingers crossed and deal with stuff when I get home. Who knows? Um, certainly this year I have more, uh, seems to be uh, more uh, mice, voles, and moles. More activity of that kind uh, than I've ever seen in my garden. And, I mean, you could say it's because the garden's mulched, but it's always been mulched. <laughs> So, you know, I think it's just one of those years, right, where they, you know, different kinds of populations have, you know, ebbs and flows, and just, just might be the, the year of the vole or something like that. But, uh, I don't know, we, you know, just, just replant and persevere, and, uh, you know, if you're having a real problem, get out the mousetraps, <laughs> that's my opinion. Uh, so anyway, uh, I hope you found this video uh, interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.